Am I, am I just semi-living right now? Or am I all the way live? I don't know, man. That sounds like a country song for sure. I think we're all the way live. I tell you, after last night and all the trick-or-treating, I, I need a little bit more. Just one more sip of coffee before we get going. Whew. It was late. Man, we like to never got everybody off of Grantland Avenue. Cool. But it was a good crowd. It was a good crowd. Fun was had by all. We had every monster you could imagine. Looks like the camera is not working on Tony's. It's just Camera's flickering in, or, in and out. I don't know. On Tony's? Yeah. So I guess we'll kill that camera off. <laughs> <laughs> My mother's going to be so hurt. I know. Look, look how right here the... The writing is up, going up and down, but the picture is sideways. See that? Yeah, that's cool. And we're getting a lot of hearts. <laughs> we're getting a lot of hearts. TikTok, we appreciate y'all. Yes, TikTok. We'll, we'll a lot of hearts. Just a minute. A lot of hearts. That must be my mother. I didn't know she was on TikTok. Well, she might be, Miss Virginia. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that there's some some mid eighty year olds on. on oh, the listen. I'm, yeah. That that's mostly our audience for uh, the, the the younger people. Yeah. <laughs> the the eighty year old TikTokers, they're my people. Yeah, they're that, my that's people. Good. They're they're good people. They're that's all right. good people. I go you visit know. them at the nursing. I, I hope when I'm eighty years old, I'm I'm with the times, but I doubt it because I'm thirty six and I'm not. Yeah, you that know. is true. I mean, I still listen to music by eighty something year olds or people who've passed away. I like old music. Well, it's just so much better though. Classic. But I'm sure that the people like my father would have said, oh, it's just so much better, the stuff from the 50s. And I'm like, yeah, it and, is. Well, there's some truth to that because Sinatra, Dean Martin. Oh, yeah. Who's better, Sinatra or Dean Martin? Well, different. I don't think you can go better on that. Okay. They're just different. Who I has mean, a better voice? Look at Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett's got a better voice than both of them. Yeah. But, I mean, they're just different cats. I saw Tony Bennett on his 90th birthday at Shermerhorn downtown. And his last song, he laid the mic down. Of course, the acoustics are unbelievable. Isn't it? He just laid the mic down on the piano and sang The Way You Look Tonight without any instruments and any microphone. Wow. And you could hear him like he was Michael Buble, that kind of power wow. in his voice. That's wild, man. And he's, yeah. he's older. He was 90. 90. That was his 90th birthday. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Well, back to the ranch. We're going to talk about real estate today. This is uh, another episode of Tuesday Morning Coffee for the TikTok crowd. If you don't know who we are, I'm Brad. This is Tony. Everybody on the face page, y'all in YouTube, y'all already know who we are. So I uh, appreciate y'all being with us again today. We're going to start with the deal of the day. Well, to back up, Halloween was last night. Halloween. Uh, Tony is at ground zero of our town where uh, Halloween happens. Grantland where, Avenue. Yeah, where um, one guy has a... a has coffins and a hearse and a graveyard. And he dresses up like he's damn out of Hollywood. Leaves it year round. Leaves it year round. It's Mid so much July, stuff. he's got a full cemetery in his yeah, front yard. Yeah. So it scares the kids away. And uh, how many children do you think you guys have? Uh, I mean, we, we usually run somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000. Okay. 1,500 and 2,000. Yeah. Wow. That, that's a lot of kids. So I mean, they're everywhere. I mean, you just, they're coming out, I'm all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. But we, I mean, our, our stuff was fresh last night. Our stuff was fresh last <laughs> night. <laughs> and G rated for the kids. That's huh? right. We had, um, we had a big, um, video, uh, uh, projector and we showed Ghostbusters on the side outside of our house. Wow. So that's the, cool. The parents were watching the movie while the kids were over there getting the candy. And, um, I mean, I'm not saying anything about the other neighbors, but they're going to have to up that game. Set, up set that game up. Yeah. So in our neighborhood, the fire department came through and kind of like, that was the announcement of Halloween starting right at 6 PM fire trucks come in. They're throwing candy. Like it's a Christmas parade. Is that the last Cassis yeah. volunteer fire department? Yeah. Boy, they have the best fish fry too. You guys are going to have to, okay. to go to we'll check that out. Mm. So uh, then all the spooks come out and it's, it's a big mm. thing. So uh, they had, I mean, they had the, the streets blocked off because uh, grandma and grandpa couldn't make it over. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. The fire department scared to come down Grantland Avenue. I believe that. I'm going to tell you what. Our little kids right there, you either give them their candy or they're going to take it from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we saw some of that last <laughs> night too. 
So uh, glad everything worked out okay. Hope, hopefully everybody was safe and, and not on too much of a sugar coma yeah. today. Uh, deal of the day. This is one we bought in Pigeon Forge. I don't think I've told you about mm. this. We bought an 800-foot cabin. Oh, I like it already. On 10 acres. How many more of those 800-foot cabins? Well, I don't know. But Can we um, get on that 10 acres? I, I don't know, but the view, it, it, you'll have to check it out on Slack. The view is unreal. Oh, my gosh. You know, Is really, it up on, uh, on the yeah. hill? So it's looking out. Yeah, it's looking out. So I, I don't know the topo on the 10 acres, but everything through there has got roll, you know. But, um, you know, you, you'll have to check that out. If, if we weren't on TikTok right now, I'd show you. Yeah. So, and I don't even know what the TikTok is, why we can, can't show it, but it doesn't matter. Well, my, so. my phone is up there. Oh, I'm see, see the, <laughs> that's the one with the, the writing going sideways right now. Correct. Okay. Everybody, all, all the comments, keep them coming. Keep them coming. A lot of, a uh, lot of hearts. That's, that's my family. How y'all doing? <laughs> Roll Tide, Mama Jean. <laughs> <laughs> so uh we bought this for 150k man well let, let me let me just run this through you will teach brad how to do this this morning so brad what do you think our arv on this is i don't know it doesn't really matter does it, <laughs> it never really <laughs> it's doesn't. Got gorgeous view i, I don't know you if paid it, a half a million for it it wouldn't matter my guess is 400 yeah maybe yeah maybe six there, there's nothing up there less than four yeah, I mean, seven hundred foot cabins on a lot are four hundred k. Uh huh. Yeah. So, and and ours is not a big cabin. It's about a it's it's a one bedroom uh, cabin, maybe eight hundred feet. Right. We got ten acres. Right. Uh, it's an older build, so it's actually like the cut logs. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So then, do, does it have a mortgage on it that we'd need to take care of? Uh, I don't think so. I think no? it's free and clear. Zero free and clear on the mortgage. Yeah. Well, Brad, can I ask you? Did, are there are there repairs we need to make on it? Uh, you know. Yeah, well, there's always some repairs. I'd say about thirty would do it. Thirty, yeah, thirty thousand. Yeah, about thirty in repairs. Thirty in repairs. I might have to come back and re-talk to you about that. We might re have to renegotiate. Negotiate. May have, may have to renegotiate. That's what we're talking about today. If anybody's wondering if we're going to get to the point, we're going to talk about renegotiation. Brad, one more thing. What were you hoping to walk away with at closing? That's after a bajillion dollars. A bajillion dollars. I there mean, we go. did we well, get that I'm, for one hundred and fifty? You said one hundred and fifty k. Okay, I'd say let's pay for that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that that's a good segue. So the past two weeks, this is series three of three. So the first week we talked about when do we go to contract. Secondly, we talked about what does due diligence look like so that we can make sure that we understand that we have a good deal. Right. So we teach seventy five percent certainty to go to contract, ninety five percent to go to closing. Why not a hundred? I don't believe in hundred percent certainty, but ninety five is awful high. That's right. So um, now we're going to talk about, okay, in due diligence, we found something that we didn't know. So mm -hmm. due diligence is for two things, to find out what we don't know and verify what we think we know. And right. so if we find out something that we, at that point, don't didn't know when we contracted, mm -hmm. then we have the ability to renegotiate. And those two things would most likely be repairs. Condition or value. Uh, and and uh, if our ARV turns out to be correct good or wanky a little bit 100 percent. so there's only five things that we need to know in order to know whether we should buy a house we need to know what the mortgage is the mortgage amount we need to know what the um the repairs are mm -hmm. how much the walk away is that's in addition to whatever's owed on the property uh any arrears any arrears with the and mortgage. then the exit value mm -hmm. so the arv if we have those five things then we're going to know enough to go out and buy a house mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people, especially new people, they want to say, well, you know, it's a two bedroom, one bath, uh, thousand square feet, rose bushes in the front. All that's fine, but that's all baked but into It doesn't ARV. matter. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. We, we, don't buy ARV, rose, we don't buy rose bushes. Yeah, we don't buy rose bushes. We want to know what the equity is. And so it's really a pretty basic math equation as to whether we can buy something or not. Uh -huh. You know, if there's enough value to where, there, to, to where we can buy and make a reasonable game, then we buy it. And if there's not enough value to where we can't make a reasonable gain on the front end, we can't right. go out and try. Right. And, you know, I have people will ask, well, why doesn't three bedrooms or four bedrooms matter? Well, all that is just a part of the ARV. Correct. You know, wh whether it's got this gorgeous view off the back deck, that's all a part of the ARV. Right. Whatever. It's not going to sell because it's got a great view. It's going to sell based on what other houses similar to it have Correct. sold for in that area. And probably right now, the past six months. Yeah. And the smaller the town gets, you can go a little further because yep. you'll have to, to get 
get enough comps. But yeah, correct. Oh, no, you're exactly right. Hundred percent. So uh, today we're going to be talking about renegotiation. How do we do this process in an efficient but also effective and ethical way? Because there's some ethics to this. So I want to start off with what what not to do. Okay. Uh, I have a friend who we had a house that we bought. I can't remember the name of the street. I, I did remember it. I can't remember. But um, we bought a house. We bought it subject to as a pre-foreclosure inheritance situation. So we had two of the big five. If you don't know what I'm talking about with the big five, go back and listen to the big five episode, big five motivators. So we had inheritance and pre-foreclosure in this situation. We bought it subject to. And we this, this was in Nashville. And we had enough houses. We had enough houses. We did not need another house. And so I called a friend of mine. He had a house on the same street that he had as a daily rental. And he loved his rentals. And I said, hey, man, do you want another house on this street? And he said, yeah. So I said, no problem. I, I signed the contract to him. This is one of the few wholesale deals that I've ever done because I'm not really, I'm, I'm not a wholesaler. You know, it's just that we had enough inventory. I thought I was helping a friend out, that kind of thing. So I don't remember the, the exact numbers. I think we bought it for around 60 and I was selling it to my friend at 100. So we're going to clear about 40K just to, to move on. And um, here's what happened in his renegotiation. And this is what's typical for a lot of people. And this is not what we teach, guys. This is not how you do, you do things. But he reached back out to me the morning of closing. I remember I was driving. I think I was on my way to close it because I was still closing at this time instead of having people sign for me. And uh, I get the call. It's him. I said, hey, man, what's up? And he said, hey, you got a second? Yeah, I got a second. Uh, you know, Brad, I've been looking at the numbers and, uh, my repair costs have, have gone up and, you know, it's going to take us $60,000 to renovate this house. Now, keep in mind, we were probably going to renovate it for half that, mm -hmm. you know, when we agreed to buy it. So I knew the numbers, you know, he, he he's, tr he's trying to pull a fast one and he, he starts to go through and I stop him and this is not his name, but I'm going to say the name. So it's like Bill. It's Brad. Yeah. To read he said, what do you mean? I said, you're really going to call me like this the morning of closing and try to renegotiate a price. I said, hey, if 60K is what you're paying, you're paying too much. But I don't think 60K is what you're paying. You know? And I and I said, I'm surprised at you, man, honestly. It's like, you know me. I'm a, We're friends. I'm surprised at you coming at me like this. He said, you know what, man? You're right. I'm sorry. I said, are you closing, Bill? <laughs> you yeah. closing? He said, "Yeah, hundred percent." I'll never forget him. He's like, hundred percent. We're the we're sending the wire now." Okay, and I thought that's the first time that I'd ever really. I mean, I've heard of that, but I hadn't been on the other end of it. And I thought, like, how sleazy is that? Mm. And so there's so many people, guys, that they they put something under contract knowing they're not at seventy five percent. They're at like twenty percent certainty that it works and their entire negotiation strategy is to negotiate with people when their their furniture is on the moving truck yeah normally it's just the it's just the big dogs i mean we had that happen to us you know they just they put a full price on it yeah and then they come back like two days before closing hey listen all right, all right we just got to look through our inspection your roof, your windows, and your HVAC are all older. And we're going to need to come down 40 grand, 60 grand. At which point, we usually just tell them, no, thank you. Yeah. We'll see you. Yeah. But, yeah, it is. It's, they're not doing it now. They're not even in business now. Well, Zillow's certainly gone. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Open Door is struggling. You know, but we, we knew that was coming. You know, uh, shout out to Open Door if you, you guys are listening. Um, Y'all need to learn how to buy. But um, anyway, so that's how not to do it. We don't want to renegotiate things as a strategy to get to a price that makes sense. We want to renegotiate things if we find out that there was something we didn't know within the due diligence process. Okay. So that brings me to, well, how do we do this? So the first thing that I want to say is that the home inspection gives you the permission to renegotiate. So Practically speaking, I, I, I try to stay away from absolutes. So I'm not going to say that all the time, 100% of the time, we're getting a home inspection on, on everything that we take title to because there's always that one deal that 
it's worth 300 K and we can buy it for 40 and the lot's worth more, you know? And so, um, those like once, I mean, it's not a lifetime <laughs> once every few, you know, three, four, five, six months that right. a deal comes through where it's like, it's just so cheap. It doesn't matter. Yeah, The dirt's worth that. Yeah. So. And so we can go ahead and close it. But like Somerville, Alabama was that way. Oh. But um, worst flea infestation we've ever had. But um, that's a different I don't know that different, different that day. double wide in Manchester that me and Corey uh, went to and walked outside. I had no idea they were just all over me. And I drove home in my drawers, left my clothes. I just threw them in the trash and drove home in my. Well, I guess that brings me to my story. So I went to Somerville, Alabama. We bought this house for fifteen thousand. We sold it for two forty five. Uh, but it was the worst flea Gorgeous infestation. brick home. Yeah, nice two, three acre lot. That, you know, uh, Carl Randall sold it for us. Great yeah. realtor out of that Huntsville market. Yeah. But, um, so I went into the house and I knew that it had really bad fleas, but we'd already bombed it twice professionally. Not like us going into the house with those little like things, no. but like professional company gone out twice. And I walk in about <laughs> 10 feet into the house from the garage and from and I think I had white pants on, but from must have been Easter. Yeah, you're correct. <laughs> yeah, my linen, my, my white linen pants. So from my ankles to my knees were black from fleas, and so I run out of the house and I do the same thing. I take my pants off, and I'm th I chuck my pants into the yard. Mm. They're they're trying to jump onto my underwear. Everything I take my shirt off, oh. and then I realize, you know, I was thinking, do I have any rubbing alcohol? And I didn't have any rubbing alcohol, but I had some good alcohol. She did have some bourbon. I had some bourbon. I had some Four Roses mm. single in, in the back of the, the trunk. I'm not sure why. But um, so I take it and I'm, I'm like unloading this like good whiskey on my legs. And they start popping off. And so I'm, I'm happy. And then I get. My, they were city. Yeah. They were. If they'd been country bugs, they'd have, they'd have been happier. On, they'd have yeah. licked away. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> I get about halfway to Nashville and I think, what happens if I get pulled over? Because here I am, I've got no clothes on, I've got underpants and I smell like liquor. Yeah. It's like, officer, I've got a great story for that's you. That's right. You know, it's like, I don't know if that, luckily everything was okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's real estate for you. So <laughs> all that to say, home inspection gives you permission to renegotiate if and when you find something that, that needs to be renegotiated, which kind of begs the next question. Do we always renegotiate? No, we don't. I think it's unethical to always renegotiate because then you're, you're saying that every contract that you do, you're not going to really abide by. Yeah. We're going to renegotiate if there are issues that were not told to us on the front end that are found. And we don't, we're not all, and at least, you know, most of the folks I know, one of the things I, I learned early on from you is I don't go back to them and say, you lied to me. Right. We're definitely going to get to that. Like how do we frame it? Very, yeah. very important. Okay. So the first thing we want to do, in my opinion, is you just send them the home inspection. You know, so we want to be 100 percent upfront, honest with them about the condition of the house. This does two things, though. I mean, number one, it shows, hey, here's a third party validation of what we're going to talk about. But secondly, it gives them really notice of what their property is, which means that they have to now disclose whatever problem is there. So now they know it's not an issue of. So like in, in a lot of states in the country, um, like landlords, as an example, if they haven't lived in the property two of the past five years, they're exempt from disclosure because it's like, well, I haven't lived in the property, so I don't know. Right. You know, new construction's exempt. Pre -for or REOs are exempt. Uh, banks that take foreclosures back, they're exempt. Um, so there are situations where people are exempt from giving notice to a buyer of condition. Well, if they have a home inspection report, that's gone. Okay, because now they know. So um, we want to send the home inspection report. After you do that, one of the things that you need to do is identify what are like the main three, four, maybe five concerns. So what we don't want to do is, is go to the seller with a laundry list of 30 items. We want to, to keep it reasonable and make it to where there's just a few things that, that popped up. Okay, but we want to make sure that they have the report. And so kind of the conversation, you start off, well, let, let's just renegotiate. Okay. All right. So Tony's my seller and uh, I'm the buyer. Hey, Tony, how's it going? I'm all right, Brad. How are you? Doing well, doing well. So I sent you over the home inspection report. Yeah. 
And I wanted to first just make sure, did you have a chance to take a look at that? Well, I did, but you know, I'm not really in the real estate business. So I couldn't really tell. Sure. But I did see some pictures of some things that looked like it was probably a little worse than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I appreciate you saying that. So, um, now that being said, I appreciate everything that you told me about the house. I know that you didn't know about these items. I didn't. Okay. I didn't. That, so uh, you didn't know that uh, there's a dead body in the basement. Had no idea. I mean, I know the fella, but yeah. I, I didn't know. Well, I don't know happened. how that happened, but there's also the HVAC doesn't work and it's 112 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I just raise the windows up. That's not a problem for me. Yeah. Well, and the next people, whoever you sell it to, they can just raise up their windows, too. Well, they could, but traditional financing won't allow for that. Hmm. Um, so um, third, there was a, a, a lateral crack in the foundation. So we have a, a structural issue. Is that the sideways one or the up and down? Yeah, okay. it's going sideways. All right. So, and, and again, I know that you didn't know about these items whenever you agreed to, to sell the house. Well, I knew about the crack. I just didn't know that it was a big problem. Understood. Understood. So and I got um, cracks on the bottom of my feet. I still walk. So <laughs> a little different for a house, Tony. Okay. So um, that being said, I didn't know about these items when I agreed to buy it. All right. That's okay. True. So, and, and I wish that I could pay you <laughs> the 30,000 walk away that you were hoping for. Mm. But of course, whenever I agreed to do that, I didn't know about these items. So what do you, after what are you seeing the facts say? and figures, after seeing the facts and figures is 30,000, the least you'd take. Well, I mean, that's what I'd like to have. It's what you said you'd give me. Well, and that's true, but that, that is also before I knew about, I've got to replace the HVAC. That's going to be six or $7,000. Mm. I've got to get this mold issue taken care of. I've got to get this lateral crack fixed and get George from the basement and, uh, properly buried. George don't bother nobody. <laughs> I understand. I mean, I might take a little less. I mean, what were you thinking about? I really don't have a number in mind and I'm a terrible negotiator and I know that you know what you need. So you said you might take a little bit less. How much less do you think you could go? I mean, I'm, I might could take, you know, I've got some things I want to do with that money and um, I, I might could take 22, 23. 22? I mean, 20. I might could take 20. You might could take 20. I'll well, take 20. If, if you'll give me 20, then then I'll that'll work for me. So not saying I can, but if I could get you 20, then we would move forward and close next week like we had planned. Can't do better than 20. The numbers are really tight. I mean, I was going to ask you, you can't do better than 20. Mm. All right. I'll, I, I need to sell it. So I'll do it. So what we did there, guys, is we don't want to try and shame someone from not knowing condition. Now, there's only two things that can be true. Either they knew and they didn't tell you or they didn't know. They probably knew about the fella. Yeah, they probably knew about the dead body. But, uh, you know, in general, we're going to assume the best in people and, right. and, and lead with, I know you, you didn't know about this. Otherwise you would have told me that's right. Because when we do that, it's either one of two things that we're saying is we're inst giving them a sense of guilt that they mm -hmm. didn't know, yeah. or we're giving them a sense of shame that they didn't know. And they didn't tell us. Yeah. And if you give them, if you throw shame at them and they have that icky feeling right then, you may just cause those folks to just say, look, I'll just go with somebody else. And they'll give them what you were wanting. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're hammering them with like, you should have known about this. You didn't tell me that you lied thing, to me. That that's a whole like, yeah, we don't want to do that at all. Okay. Um, so we want to renegotiate. We re renegotiate price first, but what a lot of people miss is going to terms. A lot of the best term deals that we've ever had were from deals that we were paying cash whenever we agreed to buy it. The home inspection came back. They were more stuck on price than they were the terms of the price based on the condition. Mm -hmm. So it gave us an opportunity to renegotiate the deal based on uh, the condition, but we got better terms and the price remained the same. So let's just say that you, we were in that process and you asked me, sir, can I do better than 30? And I said, no, no, 30 is my bottom line. Yeah. Then I would go into, well, you mentioned that you had plans for the money. What were you hoping to do with the cash? 
Uh, well, I mean, I've got to have enough to get into my new place I'm going to, you know, that's like a first month's rent and a deposit. And I need my deposits for all my utilities. And I want to pay my truck off. Okay. So um, anything else that you want to do with, with the money or is that pretty much it? Well, I'm just going to put the rest of it away. I'm just going to put the rest of it away. So um, do you know where you're moving to? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And how much is the rent per month? Well, it's eleven $1 hundred dollars a month. Eleven $1 hundred. So um, plus, I got to have eleven $1 hundred for a deposit. For okay, so uh, we'll round up and just say that's about twenty five. And you'll probably want a little bit of, of money to help move, right? So a moving truck. Yeah, yeah. Now that's right. That probably cost me about five six hundred dollars. Okay, so why, why don't we just say a, a, maybe a thousand? So. We're up to thirty five hundred, and you mentioned your your truck. It, yeah, uh, what's the payoff? Oh, the four grand on it. Four thousand dollars. So four thousand. Well, I can get you the thirty if we can do it another way. So oh, what if can. I can get you some of the cash at closing and some after closing? Would something like that work? Well, I mean, when are you talking? Us? Well, let's talk about the now money. So it, it seems like you need about 6,500 to get done what you, what you need done. So that would pay off the truck. That would get you happily moved and settled, pay for all your deposits, your utilities. So um, would, is, is that kind of what you're needing right now? Yeah, could you do 7,500? 75. So if I could do 7,500 at close and give you the, the rest of the money later, and we'll talk about how later, uh, 7,500 at close would work for you. Yeah. I mean, that'll get me what I need at closing. That'll get you what you need. Okay. So we'll do 7,500 at close. So now I've got to like recap everything we've agreed on. So we've agreed on the price. We've agreed on the closing date. We've agreed at 7,500 at close. So that's going to leave you $22,500 at, uh, that's still going to be paid to you. So there's two ways that we can do that. We can either do a lump sum in the future or what most people prefer is to get a series of payments very similar to like an annuity or maybe like a, a retirement check every month. So which sounds better for you? That retirement check. Okay. So a check every month. What do you think you, so you're, you're going to be owed 22,500. Right. Um, and I've got to somehow make a profit on the deal. Okay. So as, as an investor, I'm sure you understand as a professional investor, we have to make some kind of gain. So if I can get you 7,500 at close and pay you the 22,500 later, get this done. I'll take it as is. What could you do monthly on that 22,500? Well, I mean, Would 500 a month work? I mean, that's a nice round number. It's a nice round number. So if I could do 500 per month, then that would work for you? And we can get this done. We can still close next week? Still close next week. And I'll well, get 70, Is that what you were hoping for, is to close next week? Yeah, and I'd get $7,500 at closing. Correct. So I'd pay off my truck. Pay off your truck. All right. Okay. So that's kind of how we, we re renegotiate to a some now, some later deal. Okay. So we went price first. He stuck at 30. Then we switched it to terms. We find out what the needs were. And then we're, we put ourselves in a position to where we can create additional equity through terms. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, good work. Yeah, that, that was fun. You know, uh, one thing, if, if anybody wants to rewatch this or, or look at this, like a couple of things that I do, I try to slow down my pace. To, to really show that I'm thinking about things. Okay. So it's not an easy yes. Okay. The and second, it's not thing, because you're tricking them. You are thinking about things. Yeah, I am, yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not a slow poke, but I'm not a super quick thinker. And you have to remember that you know what you're talking about and they don't. Right. So you make them feel more comfortable by slowing down your Correct. Pace. Correct. We have to create tension. Like the, the deals that fall apart oftentimes are deals that were not negotiated well because you didn't create enough tension. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're chasing the deal and you get excited and you put your, yourself in a position where you're chasing, 
then it, it's going to be tough to make the deal stick. Right. Now, there's always uh, situations where there's exceptions. You know, you can do everything right sometimes and the, the deal still goes sideways. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, so the first thing I did is, is I slowed things down. The second thing I'm feeding things back, you know, whenever he said, I need to pay off my truck, I need to pay off your truck. There's only two ways that we can tell someone that we've listened to them. The first is to say, hey, I'm listening to you. The second way that I prefer is to feed things back, especially the things that we want them to focus on. So 7,500. And so what are you, how are you going to respond to that? When I, when you ask me what's the least I could take and I say 7,500. Yeah. So 7,500 was a number that worked for me. And so that put me in a position where I needed to, um, to hammer down that the 7,500 that he's committed to. So if so, 7,500. So if I can get you 7,500 next week when we agreed to close, then that number would work for you. Yes. Now we can talk about the later money. Mm -hmm. So, um, but at the end of the day, you know, like your, your best deals are going to come from deals that are term deals, not price. And a lot of times people forget about uh, in the rene renegotiation that you can also renegotiate the terms of the transaction. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of a funny thing. Like I've had situations, especially in renegotiation, where the, the pendulum has swung back and forth three, four, five times where we go price, price doesn't work. I go terms. They don't like the terms, but they're will, now willing to renegotiate price. Mm -hmm. So I, I come down there, but not far enough, go back to terms. Mm -hmm. And it's like this, this, this pendulum swing back and forth. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of times you can get better terms because terms are really your key for a long term. If you're setting 100%. up to owner finance, uh, terms are much better for you than a one time lump sum, even if it's less. So go down on your price first. Then that gives you the option to can go back up if you want to a little bit on your price. If they'll give you the terms. Yeah. Price first, then terms. A lot of people mess this up because they want to negotiate the terms of a deal and we don't even know the price yet. So you, you can't renegotiate, you can't negotiate terms. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times mistake. when you're, when you're making a one lump, a one time lump sum, you might be borrowing that money from somewhere else. So you're going to be paying interest on that money in order to pay that lump sum up front. Mm -hmm. However, it's better for you to pay a little bit more if you have to, to get 0% financing on your terms. Yeah. So let's just say that this was a deal where it was $30,000 free and clear and it was worth 70, you know, ARV. Then now we, we went from having to borrow $30,000 to come in to now we just got to borrow 7,500 and the down payment will pay for that. Mm -hmm. And so now we've basically created a free and clear note on a deal that we would have to otherwise retail exit because of the cost of the money at 30 K. So the 22 five, they're going to let you pay monthly is now 0% interest. Correct. Yeah. So it's really, really powerful. This is not nearly as much about buying a house as it is about crafting that deal. Yes. The, the, the house is a means to an end. You know, I'm not in love with houses. So uh, hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Tom? That's all I got, buddy. That's all I got too. All right, guys. No overdosing on the Halloween candy. Appreciate you guys. TikTok land. We'll see you guys next Tuesday, Tuesday morning coffee. Y'all take it easy. Was our